With the theory of a single line, we can now consider what happens when we have two lines in the plane. Fancy name for this is solving systems of linear equations in two variables. For our setup, we'll have two lines, L1 and L2, so say give them as AX plus BY equal to C and A prime X plus B prime Y equal to C prime. So these are given in standard form. We don't want to rule out vertical lines, so we save Y equals MX plus B for later. Now, geometrically, if I have two lines in the plane, three things can happen. They can be parallel, so that would mean they have the same slope, but say a different y-intercept. The equations that were given may look very different, but when we clean them up, they may have the same slope and the same y-intercept, giving the same line. So we'll count that as a possibility because we may not be able to tell immediately from the way the lines look. Then finally, if the slopes are different, then automatically our two lines are going to intersect in a single point. And that's going to be the main question for this video. If we have different slopes, if our lines intersect in a single point, how do we find that point for sure? Now, let's look at an example. So suppose we have the lines x plus y equal to 4 and x minus y equal to 2. How do I find the point of intersection? Well, one thing we could do is just draw the lines and try to guess the point where they intersect. So, how do we graph lines? Well, here we can go immediately to the x and y intercepts and then connect the dots. So, for the first line, okay, x and y intercept, we have 4, 0, 0, 4. So, I get this line going here. And then for the second line, we'll have intercepts 2, 0, and 0, minus 2 going here, and we connect the dots. And then if I take a look at the graph, my guess is going to be 3, 1, so over 3 and up 1. Problem is, that's a guess. So how can we be sure that this is our answer? And then also, how can I get this answer without actually drawing the lines? So that's what we're going to do next. To be sure that 3, 1 is our point of intersection, let's first introduce some terminology. So I would say that 3, 1 is a solution of our system of linear equations if 3, 1 satisfies both equations at the same time. So to check that 3, 1 is a point of intersection, I'm going to put 3, 1 in both L1 and L2. So I'll get 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. That's good. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. That's good. So 3, 1 solves both of these equations at once, and that means we have a solution, which means we have our point of intersection. Now, on the other hand, I could take a point like 4, 0. That's not going to be a solution. So if I check in our equations, what do we get? For L1, we have 4 plus 0 is equal to 4. That's good. 4 minus 0 is equal to 4, but that's not equal to 2, so that's bad. What does that mean? Well, if we look at the picture, first equation says that 4, 0 is on L1. And we know that because we found it as an intercept. On the other hand, not solving this equation means that 4, 0 is not on L2. And that's clear from the picture. So our 4, 0 winds up there. Definitely not the point of intersection. Note, checking both of these equations is going to be very important when you check your work once we get some actual technique going on. Now, without graphs, we want to get to our equations using only algebra. The overriding goal is we don't want to introduce fractions into our work until they're absolutely needed. So very often you won't see a fraction until you get to your final answer. Now, we'll have two methods. First method is called the substitution method. This one's a little bit easier than the second one, but we only want to use this one when one of our equations has either a plus minus x or a plus minus y. So if you don't have that, you're going to get fractions immediately using this method. 
Now, what do we do? Well, based on where the plus minus x or plus minus y is, you're going to want to isolate that variable. Then we're going to take our isolated variable, take the expression on the other side, and then substitute it into the other equation. That'll give us a equation in one variable, which we can solve. And then we're going to take the answer from that, put it back into the isolating equation from one, and that'll give us the other variable. We have our answer, and then from the previous board, we now know how to check the answer and be certain that we have our point of intersection. Now, let's see how we would do the previous set of lines using this method. So we definitely have plus minus x or plus minus y in one of the equations. In fact, every variable that shows up satisfies that. So we could use any of those that we want, the y that I'm going to isolate is going to be here. So I'm just going to move the x to the other side as a minus x. Now, for the substitution step, wherever I see a y in this equation, I'm going to replace it with minus x plus 4. And I'll want to put that in parentheses so I don't lose minus signs. So line 2 is going to turn into this. We distribute the minus sign. That's going to give me... What do we have here? So minus minus becomes a plus, so we get 2x minus 4 and then 2 on the other side. We move the 4 to the other side to get 2x equal to 6, and x equals 3 for half of our answer. So no, we're not done yet. I need an xy, so I have the x. How do we get the y? Well, we're going to take our x and now just put it back into the isolating equation. So that's going to give us y equal to minus 3 plus 4. That gives us y equals 1. So our total answer is the point of intersection is 3 comma 1. We would check this by putting it back into the original equations, but note we already checked that on the previous board. Let's try an example with a little bit more going on. So we have 3x minus 8y equal to 1, minus x plus 3y equal to minus 1. Here we note, we have only one option for isolating, the minus x. So we move it to the other side. We move the minus 1 to the left-hand side. And we get for our isolating equation, x equal to 3y plus 1. Now, where we have x in the first line, we're going to put 3y plus 1 in parentheses. Okay, worth noting, if we were to put it in line 2, we would get 0 equal to 0, which is no help. We substitute. So we have 3 times 3y plus 1. We distribute to get 9y plus 3. We solve and we get y equal to minus 2. Now, that's only half of our solution. So we're going to substitute minus 2 in for y in the isolating equation, and then that's going to give us x equal to minus 5. So our solution is minus 5 minus 2. That's the point of intersection for these two lines. Of course, we check our work, so we'll substitute minus 5 minus 2 into the two equations. And we know, what do we get? So for the first one, minus 15 plus 16 is a 1, so that checks. And for the second one, 5 minus 6 is minus 1, and that checks also. Now, worth noting, technique you want to avoid, so everything we're doing here is to solve systems of linear equations in two variables with avoiding fractions for as long as possible. Technique I often see is when we're given the equations in standard form, students will immediately solve for both of those as y equals mx plus b, then set the y's equal to each other. Now, this can be a problem if you don't like fractions. So it'll work, but if you don't like fractions, you could get into trouble immediately. For instance, with the system we just did, the two lines that come out look like this, and the first equation you need to solve is going to look like this here, which has fractions all over it. You'll also note, using the substitution method, we never once use a fraction. So this, um, we want to avoid if we can.
For our next method, we have the addition method. So this is what you want to use when there's no isolating variable. So in that case, there's no plus minus x or plus minus y. For our first step here, we want to put both equations in standard form. So that way there's going to be three columns. We'll have an x column, a y column, and a c column. The strategy here is I want to add down all three columns at once and make it so that one of the variables disappears. And then we just have an equation in one variable. We get half our answer. Now, that's the tricky part. So what we're trying to get to get something to go away is either ax over minus ax or by over minus by. We add down the columns. We're going to eliminate a variable. We can solve for the other one. And then like with the substitution method, once you have half the answer, you can put it anywhere else to get your full answer. And then, of course, we'll check. Now, first, let's just start with the example from before to see how the mechanics work cleanly without rescaling any of the equations. So I'll have x plus y equals 4, x minus y equal to 2. I notice I have y over minus y. So if I add down all the columns, we're just going to get 2x equal to 6, which gives me x equal to 3. That's half our answer. Then we're going to substitute this 3 anywhere we want. So I'll put it back in the first equation. And that's going to give me 3 plus y equal to 4. We get y equals 1. And then we have our answer from before of 3 comma 1. Okay, so no need to check. Here's a problem where we really need the addition method. So I have 3x plus 2y equals 2. 5x plus 4y equals minus 2. We note there's no isolated variables, plus minus x or plus minus y. And using the addition method, we don't have ax over minus ax or by over minus by. So if you were to just add down the columns, not going to be a lot of help. So what I have to do is I have to figure out how to get ax over minus ax or by over minus by. To do that, I only need to fix one equation. So what I'm going to target is this 2y over 4y. I could scale up to get minus 4y over 4y. And then when we add down, that's going to go to 0. Now, how do I get that? Well, that's multiplying 2y by a minus 2. I'm not allowed to just multiply that by a minus 2, though, or I'll break the equation. So I have to multiply everything by minus 2, and then the equality still holds. So the step I need is going to look something like this for good bookkeeping. I'm going to multiply everything in the first equation by a minus 2. So that's going to go to minus 6x minus 4y equals a minus 4. So now I'm going to get rid of the first equation and use this instead. Now you'll notice we have minus 4y over 4y. We add, okay, going down the columns, I have a minus x, a 0, and a minus 6. So clearing out the minus sign gives us x equal to 6. Now I'll take that. I'm going to put it into the second equation, but we could put it in either one. And then that's going to give us y equal to minus 8. So our solution is going to be 6 comma minus 8. Of course, we check our work, so we'll put it in both equations. And then we know, what are we getting? 18 minus 16 equals 2 for the first one. And 30 plus minus 32 for the second one equal to minus 2. And so everything checks out. Now let's consider an example where we need to scale up both equations. We have 4x minus 3y equal to minus 1, minus 3x plus 2y equal to 1. Here, there's no isolating variable. And you'll note, going to the addition method, we don't have ax over minus ax or by over minus by. In this case, we're going to need to fix both equations since we can't just scale one of these columns up to the other directly. Now, we can go with either the x or y variable, 
Here we'll just go with the X, no reason, just to do different column this time. And I'll note I have a four and a three, so those are both gonna to need to scale up to a 12. So I'm looking for 12X over minus 12X. That means first equation we scale by three, second equation I scale by a four. I do my bookkeeping off to the side, so like before, for the first line, we get new equation 12x minus 9y equal to minus 3. And for the second line, we get new equation minus 12x plus 8y equal to 4. We now replace both equations with our new equations. We add down the columns, and now I note, okay, what are we going to get? 0 minus y, 1. We fix the sign to get a y equals minus one. And then I could take this and put it into either equation. So I'll just put it into the first. We know what comes out of here is also x equal to minus one. And that gives us our solution, the point of intersection, minus one, minus one. Of course we check. So we put minus one, minus one to both equations. And then we know minus four plus three is a minus one, so that's good. Minus minus three, that's a three, minus two is a one. That's good also. So that's what we're looking for.